Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is data. Yes, data. The time I'm recording this, a lot of y'all have interim assessments and uh, CBAs and uh, many assessments that you're giving and you're really starting to accumulate a lot of data, <clears throat> but you may not know what to do with it. And so I've got two easy things for you to remember. All right. One is the four step process. If you're going to mine it, you're going to format it, you're going to analyze it, and then you're going to communicate it. And I'll come back to that. And the second part is to use my handy dandy form that's down in the description. I'll come back to that too. Two parts. Over here, you're going to mine it. Many of you use Edgeforia or DMAC or something local as a storage place for all of your data. I'm very comfortable with Edgeforia. If you're not informed about Edgeforia, highly recommend you Google it or send an email to ed at edgeforia.com. Again, it'll be in the description and he'll help you through the whole process. But you've got to get really comfortable with your program so that you can mine the data. That means bringing it out, figuring out what data you want to uh, analyze. Then you've got to format it. And if any of you know Edgeforia, you export it into Excel. And then you've got to format the pages. You've got to format the columns, all of that, which is another skill set, but you got to do it. Then you have to actually analyze the data really go through, see the patterns, the outliers, the things that you, you question, and then you communicate that. You do need to know your data though. And if you can go to a team and say, I saw X, Y, and Z in the data, let's have a discussion. Then that's a non-threatening conversation with your teams. And hopefully they can come up with the solutions the adjustments, the things you need to protect, and so forth. And then you go to communicate all of this. You're communicating it to your teams, to your campus council, to your PTA, and so forth, and to your students. There is nothing better than going to the cafeteria with a stack of papers and saying, you, come here. They're going to come up to you sort of scared, not knowing what's going on. And you're going to say, hey, your scores rocked on that last benchmark. You keep it up. And then I want you to see the way they walk back to the cafeteria table. You talk about st strutting their stuff, about walking with pride. When they know that you know their data and that you know who's doing quite well, or who has grown, life changes as a principle. I'm just telling you, just telling you. So get that, get that process in your mind. You're going to mine it. You're going to format it. You're going to analyze it. And you're going to communicate it. I'll come back to those in a minute. Because data can be overwhelming, especially for new administrators. That's why I created my handy dandy chart. So let's talk about this chart for a second. Depending on if you're on a, in a big district or a small district, anytime you take an assessment, you would want to know how you compare, right? How do you compare to the other schools in the district? How do you compare to other title schools? How do you compare to schools with your, within your area or like minded or like campuses, campuses like yours, other bilingual campuses. If you're in a big district, you could probably pull that information. If you're in a small district, you're the only one, skip that step. 
Let's go to the next one. Just overall, how did your school do? And in Edgeforia, one of the main dashboards shows you overall with your sub pops. I like to go deeper and I'll talk to you about it, but just overall, how'd you do? And then by teacher, if you have one teacher and you're departmentalized, how did she do in different classes? If you have multiple teachers, how did they do comparative to each other? Your sub pops, your student expectations, and in Texas, that's what we call them, specifically a readiness or supporting, and depending on where you are in your scope and sequence and depending on your assessment, you'd really want to go into that report and analyze that information. Your item analysis, and in Edgeforia, you can get overall or you can get it by student to see, okay, which students picked which questions and I wonder why they picked those questions. Then tutoring strips, and again, that's just a standard report in Edgeforia. I want to know which kids failed this thing. I really want the bottom line, that's, that's one of them because we're going to have to create a solution for that. I want to know all of my students, alphabetical, how did they do, right? And then I call them special programs. So for state accountability, you have your sub pops, but I'll, I want to go deeper. I want to go into 504. I want to go into GT. Your EB, emergent bilingual kids, are in most of your reports, but I want to know the health of my programs. And I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Historically, how have we done on this uh, assessment? Like if we took this assessment last year at the same time, interim assessment, how did we do? I want to know uh, if it's your state accountability at the end. How did we do at the end of last year and the, end, the year before that? If it's a, a CBA or just a mini assessment, okay, historically, how has this class done on all of the other mini assessments. Quintiles is a lead forward report. I'm gonna leave it right there because that's a whole video in itself. I call this single digits because if we've got kids scoring in single digits on an assessment, we have a problem. And I need to know how big that problem is. Sometimes there are no single digits, rock on. Sometimes there's a lot problem. So all of these columns are to bring out information and to tell you if we're going to protect something or solve something, fix something. I want to know about the kids who've already been retained somewhere in their educational career. That's a, that's a big deal for me especially if they're homegrown. If we retain them in kinder and first, I wanna know how they're doing in third and fourth and fifth. And they should be doing better. And if they're not, okay, we've got an issue to deal with. Progress, and in the state of Texas, progress is 85% of our accountability system. So I wanna know that kids are making progress. And if they're not, why not? Which kids are not? Now. You notice I left some columns blank. because so every time I do this, which I do it like this, every time I think of things I hadn't thought about before that I really want to analyze, like uh, the historical performance of SPED students or 504 students or GT students. I want to know the historical performance. What about this? Here's another one, of course. I got it, I've got notes all over it. Uh, my red flag kids. And my red flag kids are mainly on state assessments, kids who failed it, kids who didn't grow from the year before, and then kids who failed it and didn't grow from the year before. And then here is my last one. And look at all of this, all of this over here. I wanted to know historical SEs, student expectations, skills. 
how have we been scoring historically on this SE? I wanted a grade level summary so that I could see if this teacher is departmentalized, how did she do in this class with that class, with that class? Then I wanted historical data on each student. If they took this interim, how did they do on the last assessment and the assessment before that and assessment before that, whether it be interim or local or uh, state, I wanted to know that. So that's the explanation of the columns. So just think about if you analyzed that data, how much more informed you would be so that you could go into a conversation with the team and say, okay, here are the things I saw. I'm not an instructional specialist, I'm a generalist, but here's what I saw in the data. So let's talk about this discrepancy or let's talk about this great thing that I saw or let's talk about uh, historically how we've done and if we're on the right track. When you have those conversations, you are the instructional leader. Now you may not have all the answers. Good grief. I never had all the answers. I had a lot of questions sometimes. I had some times when I saw things teachers didn't and vice versa. But when I was at my highest performing school, what I saw that there was not a lot of variation in the data. This teacher A scored about the same as teacher B, scored the same as teacher C. And what I learned at that campus is when teachers plan together, when they communicate, they have very solid and very consistent data. Now, you, I know you're asking, what is column A for? There is nothing over here in column A. And those are your assessments. So in this column, these are my assessments. So I had third grade math and reading, fourth grade math and reading, fifth grade math, reading, and science. The reason I do it this way is you may start with third grade reading and you're pulling this data and you're rocking and rolling and everything's great and then you get to third grade uh, reading and then you start getting tired or distracted or so forth and you sort of stop. Well, this kind of checklist makes you keep going all the way to the end so that you're evaluating all of the assessments with the same scrutiny. Because now think about this, there's seven assessments, right? If I get down here to fifth grade science and I don't have the same energy, the same intensity, the same focus as I did third grade math, then I'm doing a disservice for fifth grade science. And when you see patterns, because you will analyze all of these uh, sub pops, when you start to see patterns third through fifth grade, no matter what subject, let's say your GT kids are not performing, okay, we need a solution for that. But if you don't go all the way through, third grade GT may be doing fine and you stop there and you're like, well, GT's fine. But fourth grade GT, how are they? How are your emergent bilingual kids doing in reading versus math at all grade levels. So just using this chart is going to help you get a, a better understanding of your data and how your students are performing. Okay, to summarize, use four steps. You're gonna mine the data, you're gonna format it, you're going to analyze it, and then you're going to communicate it four steps. And if you use this chart, it's going to help you analyze all of your assessments equally so that then you can see patterns. Mm -hmm.